Back in 1996, you might remember this, a company called Soundcore invented the noise cancelling headphone. And I was told it was done in a van down by the river. In 1978, another company called Edifier invented the modern monitor speaker made with wood and dolphin scales. And because of that, audio engineers everywhere rejoiced in the streets, partly leading to the Tiananmen Square protests in 1989, unfortunately. But the big question we're going to answer today is, what have these two brands got anything to do with each other? Well, Edifier thinks its latest WH-950NB headphone can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Soundcore's popular Q45, and maybe even something beyond that, like against the Sony WH series. Wow, Edifier, that's a mighty fighting words coming from you. Who do you think is gonna win, guys? So let's find out after these messages. That way. <laughs> I'm quite sure we're gonna win this one. Not so fast, muchacho. You may be the bigger brand, but as the old saying goes, the small fish always eats the big fish and wins the day. Okay, hold up. How big of a driver do you have doing all the grunt work anyway? 40 millimeters? Okay, same. How about weight then? About 290 grams? Okay, close enough. How about this, multi-point or button controls? You got noise cancellation, pass-through mode? Oh yeah, we have noise cancellation, pass-through mode, Two stages. <laughs> we got three stages, so suck it. How about this? Bluetooth 5.3 with LDAC, high res certification, SBC, and AAC. Oh, we have, um, oh, okay, no AAC, so no Apple support. I bet your battery life stinks. Well, the Q45, as you know it, gets 43 hours with ANC on at 65% volume, as tested by Gear Up with Aaron. Only the best YouTube channel on the planet right now, dang it. Well, Edifier fanboy. Not doing so hot, are we? How much do you cost anyway? About $180. Oh, snap. Anyone can get a Q45 for $140 retail. That's excluding discounts nowadays. I'm not sure if you're a follower of Scary Pockets, and if you're not, you should definitely check them out. I'll link them down below on YouTube, but they make awesome covers. And as it was, you should check this one out because it has Bella Flack playing the banjo. And it sounds amazing. Oh. But anyways, we're out here doing the Bluetooth range test um, on these 950s and I have uh, the song playing on my Pixel 7 Pro and you can see we're testing a lot of headphones and earbuds as well. Um, anyways, I'm going to walk around, take these headphones around the corner of my house and we'll see how strong the signal hangs on to this. The phone is at the end of my deck and I'm where I'm standing, it's around 25 feet and it should last usually for headphones they last around 40 feet before we start hearing signal issues some tend to hang on stronger and some very rarely perform really badly but oh this edifier is still hanging on oh we just got a just one little buzz just one little cutout but so far so good so far so good no issues oh wow just another cutout right there. Sorry about the exposure issues, guys. It's a really bright and sunny, cloudless day. Look at this. I'm gonna quickly dash out to the road. I'm in the middle of the road, guys. Oh, I just got one cut out there and it just gave up. It just gave up. That's pretty good, actually. So I'm impressed with this one. Nice job, Edifier. Um, you can see the fit of these in my ears. They are. A little bit bulkier in it compared to the competition uh, Q45s and the Sono Flows. You can see, especially in this colorway, I like I like taking uh, white color or light colored models so you can film better. But I think in this case, black would be a little bit more discreet in terms of how it looks. It's bulky, looking like an older school, like a Q30 or Q uh, Q30 especially or a Q20. So, anyways. Oh jeez, I almost tripped and died right there. This looks like snow, but it's actually ice, guys. Um, I definitely won't run in it. I'm just doing this for fun. Um, it's not super, super stable on the, on the head. Uh, quite similar to the Q35s and Q30s. So don't take them running. If you're chasing after your dog or your kid at the park or something, it's okay for short bursts, but otherwise, nah. But I'm more curious right now how these perform 
down by the street when we test out the mic. So there's a bus coming up the road right now with a whole line of traffic coming up behind it. We can test out these mics to the full effect. It would be better if it was wet too on the road. And you can hear how it performs in different frequencies. Testing, testing, one, two, three, how did that sound? These are actually pretty darn good. You can hear from the samples here, my voice quality is quite well retained in it. Not much clicking, not, not much clipping here and there and uh, overlapping of the algorithm trying to figure out what to cancel and whatnot. Testing, testing, one, two, three, more traffic. This is rush hour a little bit. Um, sorry about the exposure too. There's no leaves on the trees. The, it's a cloudless day. So yeah, I'm having a hard time with this. Here comes more traffic. One thing nice about these two is if you're in active noise cancellation or wind noise reduction mode or whatever, when you get a phone call or if you make a phone call, it goes into pass-through mode so you know you can hear your surroundings better and so you're not like so focused on a call that you're not aware of traffic around you. That's a good thing. I like it. It's a nice safety feature, even if they probably don't even think about that or advertise it that way. I think it's a safety ish, a safety uh, feature. So, anyways, the voice quality in quiet environments is great. And in noisy environments, it's also pretty darn good. So um, let's bring out just for fun the Q45 next, as well as the sound of flow, so you guys can compare side by side when I switch between the camera and the headphones. All right, I just slapped on the Q45s, and right off the bat, you can probably tell the difference between my voice. Just jump back a few seconds, and then you can see the voice quality. I used to like the Q45s, but the edifiers trumped them. It sounds really good on that one. And now this one sounds a little bit more digitized and a little more strained in terms of the algorithm. When traffic passes by, you can see it's pushed a little bit more. And one thing I probably didn't, uh, definitely didn't talk about was wind. There is some wind up there in the trees. And in the 950s, if you look or listen closely with headphones especially, you can hear some wind entering the mics just a little bit considering how much wind I'm getting. Uh, you can probably hear it right now too on the Q45 directly in this direction um, and you can probably hear it a little bit more on this piece how's the quality again testing testing one two three these are good but i think the edifiers do a lot better in this case so just for fun i ran in to grab these one more sauna flows because i thought some of you may like watching this comparison to compare to three and because when you think about it this when it came out was marketed as a soundcore q45 competitor hence therefore it's also an edifier 950 nb competitor which makes me wonder why i didn't include it into into this review in the first place but that's for another time uh, but i thought you might like this and right off the bat, I think the Edifier wins again. I think the Q45 comes in close. This thing, yeah, it's, I think it's at the bottom of the pack. Right now it's quiet, not much wind either, but you can hear stuff coming in it. And here comes more traffic. And I think based on my memory and just earlier testing as well, uh, this thing gives up the ghost much more quickly. And that person was looking at me funny. They need to do a cleanse. I don't think they've seen an Asian person holding a giant honking camera before in an orange jumpsuit. <laughs> but anyways, um, the wind now is coming from that direction. You can see, I'm going to walk this way. Can you hear much? Oh, here comes an 18-wheeler. Oh, yes. Let's test this out. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Testing, testing. One. That person was looking at me funny, too. Pizza. Have you not seen Asian people here in Maine? No, they haven't. <laughs> Anyways, let's head back to the studios. You guys can just use the player down below to go between the three different models and see which one you prefer. The app setup for the 950NB is vastly broader than the one for the 820NB. I'll link the video to the 820NB where you can check out the unboxing and I look at the app in that one and you can compare the two. Where the lesser sibling was all minimalist, you'll find a whole lot more to fiddle with here. Perfect for ADHD folks. If you like to fidget with things, this is the app to do it. On the main screen, you can cycle from noise cancellation off to a couple of levels for uh, noise cancellation itself. There's low as well as high. And then there's wind noise reduction that lets in a little bit of the mids a little bit. Uh, as well as ambient mode, which has six levels actually, has minus three and all the way up to positive three. Swiping over one screen, you'll find uh, two EQ presets. There's classic, which is basically more or less balanced and then there's dynamic which pushes a more drastic v curve if that's your kind of thing for pop and rock and such and then we have customized which has a four a four band eq that actually 
to my ears is less effective than what I was hoping for, considering a couple of tweakable aspects that you don't usually find in other brands. If you look below the uh, four band itself, you have something called a Q factor, which is where you can adjust the width of the center frequency, which is nice. Um, and also you can assign right here at the bottom uh, a frequency to each of the four bands so you're not locked into a specific frequency usually decided by the manufacturer which is really nice now let me back out of this swipe one over there is a gaming mode here that drops latency to about i would say 50 ish milliseconds it's not meant for hardcore gaming but it's good enough for most um and in the settings on the top right here, where you click the gear icon here, uh, you'll find LDAC controls, for example. I like to keep it at 96 kilohertz, even though it's, you know, everyone has that debate that LDAC via Bluetooth, you're really not getting it. Um, but I keep it on, but you have a couple of options. You have near CD level quality at 44.1 or 48 and 96, um, or you can disable it all together. Now, I want you to note that with LDAC on, uh, in this case, multi-point, let me back out here, multi-point is deactivated uh, or they call it dual device connection. Uh, and it's quite annoying, at least on my unit, I noticed that each time I disable or re-enable LDAC or multi-point, it requires a fresh pairing of the headphone with the phone again, which is really strange. Now, um, the other thing I really like that's really unique uh, to the 950 MB right here is safe volume. Um, you can enable it or disable it. Say, if you're lending this to your kids to use and don't want them to blow their ears out, uh, the headphone will lock a max volume at 85 decibel, which is similar to being at a noisy airport. Ultimately, both of these will please different crowds. One's a little bit more technical, the other is a little bit warmer. I have to say this, the Edifier is creamy in the way it presents vocals and mid-range instruments. And I prefer this kind of tuning because it just feels a little bit more laid back and easier to listen to for hours on end without being too fatiguing. Um, EDM, dubstep and rap listeners will enjoy the decent sub bass, although it doesn't hit as hard as the Q45. One quality of the bass that I do not like is the slightly overemphasis on certain instruments like bass drums and acoustic guitars at the expense of detail. The relaxed drumline piano guitar combo in the song November 99 by Manu Katshe is a good example of that slight amount of bass wooliness. I can't put my finger on it. Um, mid and highs though are really playful in this thing. Now the Q45 on the other hand has a slightly different setup. It has a wider sound stage, it has a sharper V profile giving the impression of a more versatile audio profile. But if you listen carefully, you'll notice that the bass is a little bit more muffled and less precise in jazz or classical pieces while the vocals can get really harsh in the upper regions. At default EQ, it's best when you have music or audio or whatever that live in the sub bass and extreme treble regions. My professionally tuned ears tell me that the Soundcore Q45 dulls out high frequencies a tad bit better. But overall, both are a doozy. They're definitely not like Sony XM4s or 5s or Bose 700 level, but should serve you just fine if you're commuting daily on a train or a bus. Now, planes or loud constant drones, on the other hand, are a whole other matter in which the Edifier and the Soundcore won't give you like tomb-like isolation that higher-end models can. High noise cancellation.
Noise reduction on. Noise reduction on. Ambient sound. Noise reduction on. Noise reduction on. Ambient sound. Noise reduction on. Weighing within 5 grams of each other and both possessing roughly the same clamping force, it is therefore strange that the 950NB is the one that I have a harder time wearing for longer listening sessions, like anything over an hour. The ear cups, the padding are fantastic, but it is the heat buildup and also the materials that don't seem to breathe very well that start to make my head and Weirdly, my neck muscles feel more stressed than they need to. Now, looks are most often subjective and it's harder to judge. Although, you can't deny this fantastic specimen gracing your screen right now, isn't it? It's really hard to look away, right? I have been told I look like Jason Scott Lee, only better looking. Just go with it. But anyways, the edifier has enough real metal on it as well as metal-like accents combined with textures on the ear caps as well as the ear pads that make it look more expensive than it actually is. And it just feels nicer made than the Q45 that just looks more plasticky. In terms of ergonomics, and I've mentioned this in the 820NB review, and the same thing applies here, both headphones use buttons for controls, but Edifier makes it easier and quicker to use by touch alone. Like say in the dark or if you're visually impaired, it's easier to find out what you need. But I do appreciate the separate pause play button on the Q45. So I guess my ideal button-based control layout would be a mish mash of both. So Soundcore and Edifier, if you're watching this, get it done. To quote Shakespeare, if he was a capitalist, to buy or not to buy, that is the million dollar question. Soundcore's Q45 retails for $140 with deep discounts happening often on Amazon, while Edifier, price-wise, oh my goodness, shot itself in the foot by not price matching or trying to at least undercut Soundcore like it normally does. $180, guys, is psychologically too high for me, even though, as I shared minutes ago, the 950 is a fantastic piece of kit. It's super competitive on the soft and hardware fronts, but Edifier, you better start drastically dropping the price right now, like right now. You should be doing what Soundcore used to do more often in the past, like undercut your main competitors in price and performance, and then watch them cry in the corner for their mommies. So I say keep the 950 on your shopping list if you're not like buying right now and wait for discounts to hit. If you need a headphone right now, ASAP, buy the Q45. If you want most of the pros of the 950NB, want to stick with Edifier but can't stomach the price, buy the 820NB. So with all that said, I'm giving the Edifier WH-950NB a gear up score of 8.2 out of 10. And this is how I broke it down to get the final score. If you have any questions about how I got there, feel free to comment down below. And by the way, thank you so much for watching guys. Thank you for Edifier for sending this to me. They didn't pay me to say any of this. These are all my own opinions. And this is how we roll here in Gear Up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe, thumbs up, comment nicely down below. And remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what guys? If you haven't seen the news, the world needs it more than ever. And it starts with you. I love you all very much. Thank you for watching. Check out my playlist. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace out. 